Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRayMaker.com and today I've got a quick first look at the new Stages Dash M200 and L200. Now this is Stages third generation unit. Previous to this, there was the M50, which is this one right here. There we go. And then on this side, the larger unit, there was the L50 right there. M standing for medium and L standing for large. And then prior to all that, there was like the L10 and the original Stages Dash, but that's like a long, long time ago. Now before we get too far into this, it's worthwhile noting that all the software features on the new M200 and L200 are coming actually they've already come to the m50 and l50 uh, that happened actually last month in a massive software update that refreshed the entire user interface as well as added new features like amp plus connectivity for e-bikes and new auto profile and auto sensor stuff if you look at the list on the website it is massive for the number of new features and tweaks and changes and bug fixes and all that goodness so that's there today the vast majority of the changes on the m200 and the l200 are hardware based and i'm going to kind of walk through them here in this video this is not a full in-depth review video because i don't have the number of rides that i want yet on these units you better make like a final determination on them i've got a first ride in already but i just really want more rides like anything else i test to make sure i kind of get into all the nuances so let's just dive into it first up uh, with the M200, that all these changes are the same on the L200. Uh, the very first thing that you see from the top uh, is that you new user interface right there. Uh, it is so much better. I just found the old user interface like really clunky in a lot of different areas. Uh, this one just is, is straightforward. You can get to things you want to really quick and you can do that using these new buttons. Uh, so these are the new buttons on the M200. You see the old buttons right there. Uh, now at first glance, it doesn't seem like that big a deal, uh, but the old buttons were absolutely positively miserable. Uh, they were just really hard to press you had to really like press them in to get them to go somewhere. Uh, the newer buttons are just, there we go, just very easy to press. Uh, maybe not quite as good as something like the uh, Wahoo Bolt buttons, but in the same like general ballpark of goodness compared to, well, the past anyways. Uh, so the buttons there are refreshed. Uh, you'll notice that there's a new side button on the left-hand side versus the old ones on the right-hand side. No big deal. Uh, but the bottom is where the magic is. So they've gone ahead, they've ditched the existing stage of proprietary mount. Uh, that mount kind of went in these grooves right there. Uh, and in theory, it was a good idea because it meant that your mount was uh, kind of super low profile when your bike computer was not on the bike. Uh, so it looked really clean. Uh, but in reality, I found it super finicky. I found it often required a lot of force to snap in there. Uh, and it didn't really support the unit very well because it was on the edge. So when you press down on it, you felt like you're going to break it off the mount, even though you weren't, but you just kind of felt that way. And then for third party mounts, there was really no third party mounts that supported it. So that was a problem, especially for people that had bikes that had built in Garmin quarter turn mounts. So the new one has a quarter turn mount on it. You can see it's built in there. Standard issue Garmin one works with any Garmin uh, third party mount out there, which is every third party mount out there. So that makes it really nice and easy. Now, the one downside here is it's still a micro USB. If you look on the bottom there, in talking to stages about that, they said that's really just a supply limitation. They wanted to go to USB-C, uh, but for this particular design, uh, their ability to get to USB-C in the current environment just wasn't possible uh, without pushing out their timelines a ton. So they said they understand that's the future, that's where they want to be, but sadly it's not there today. Uh, now, all of this is also the same on the Stages Dash L200. Uh, so you see again, the new buttons right there, far easier to press up and down. Uh, also, you'll notice in this one, I've configured the dark background. On this one, the light one, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, that's all changeable. Also notable is that you can still do landscape mode on both of these. Uh, so landscape mode is what I have right here, uh, but you can also go to portrait mode in this case. Again, this is the older unit, uh, but it's still offered here. I just go down into settings, dash, go down into orientation, and then choose landscape, and you'll see it changes it. So it's like this. Now, while this does not have the dual mounts like the old one did, uh, because it has a new quarter turn mount, almost every single third party quarter turn mount out there uh, can be rotated, usually by screws underneath it, especially for the out front mounts. So you can still do landscape on both the M200 and the L200 if you want to. Now, the next big change is the inclusion of Wi Fi. Uh, so if I go over to this one right here, you'll see there's now Wi Fi connections right there. I go down into Wi Fi. Uh, and I can go ahead and I can see my two Wi-Fi networks there, my office one here in the cave and my home one. Uh, and I can check for things, check for updates on Wi-Fi, et cetera. But most importantly, I can check for maps. I can download maps directly uh, from this itself. So I'll go back to files and then down into maps. Uh, and I can choose to manage my maps and I can choose what countries I want. And I can just simply choose any country from this list here and go ahead and download that. Uh, so pretty straightforward, I can choose uh, there we go, Georgia, I didn't really mean to do that, I meant to choose uh, Finland or France. Uh, and in this case, 
it'll just start downloading automatically. You can see it's pretty pretty quick there, uh, moving right along. It doesn't take very long. I then to pull up the phone for this. I can do this from the phone if I want to, but I don't necessarily have to. Okay, well that's finishing up that, a couple of tech spec and housekeeping things. Uh, from the housekeeping side, if you haven't whacked that like button down there, do that. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, from the tech spec side of things, uh, they've gone ahead and reduced the weight from 95 grams to 77 grams for the M200, and from 127 grams to 105 grams for the L200. They've kept the same screen sizes as before, so 2.5 2 inches and 2.7 inches. And then they've increased the waterproofing and dust resistance spec from IPX7 to IP57. Basically, that just adds like more dust resistance. That essentially means you can go down to one meter deep for 30 minutes. Uh, and I've done that with some of these, by the way, uh, and it's just fine. So if you find yourself at the bottom of a canal or a shallow canal anyways, you're good to go. Well, you probably should leave actually, but you're good for a while in the canal. Anyways, they've also increased the battery life from 15 hours to 18 hours on the M200, uh, and they've maintained the same battery life at 18 hours on the L200. Now at this point, that map is downloaded, so I'm all set there. I'm just going back very quickly through some of this stuff, back to this homepage to show you what this looks like. Uh, you can see I can start my ride at the top there using an automatic profile. Automatic profiles basically just automatically figure out what data pages you might want based on the sensors that you've paired. Uh, so you can still set up all your own custom profiles and pages and all the craziness that Stages is known for, uh, but here this is just just like a get out and ride sort of thing to save you a bunch of time in configuring until you get around to it. Uh, down here you got files. This is where you can look at your past ride history. I can pull up on a course. This is the course I made uh, for a day or two ago. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and then down here I got structured workouts I can add and again managing my maps. Uh, going down again, I can manage my sensors. That's the phone and the Wi-Fi that I showed you a moment ago. And then I can go into the settings and configure all of my dash settings, uh, both a profile level as well as the dash unit level. Uh, now, all this stuff is configurable on the phone app as well, which is brand new. So Stage has released a brand new phone app. It's completely refreshed. It doesn't suck anymore, so that's positive. Uh, and in general, virtually everything here just feels cleaner and fresher than it did on the old units with the old user interface. Now, with the new user interface on the old units, it definitely feels refreshed, just doesn't feel as snappy as this one. Now, before we get to the first ride, one quick thing you may have noticed here is that the branding on the boxes is different. Uh, for the L200, I got the Giant Edition, and then for the M200, I've got the Stages Edition. That corresponds as well with the front of the units, uh, and that's because Stages and Giant have like, combined together a little bit here on this, uh, primarily, I think, from a manufacturing standpoint. Stages has long used Giant for manufacturing of indoor bike stuffs, uh, and now they're partnering on the head units. In fact, Giant's pro team, their world to approach sponsor team uh, is already using these head units out on the road today. So uh, you can get it either in Giant or Stages branding. Under the covers though, it's the same features and functionality. Okay, so with that, I went out for a ride a couple days ago with the M200, a first ride. Uh, weather was properly miserable. Before I did that though, I created a route on Strava, uh, and then I just synced it to the unit itself, uh, and then I got out riding. As I'm riding along, the buttons were super easy to use with my gloves, no problems there. No problems with rain on the display, there was plenty of that. Uh, all of this stuff was pretty much as I would expect for a bike computer. Again, I can change my data fields, uh, see all my data there. It automatically connected to my power meter as well as my varia radar and my heart rate strap and showed me the data from that as I would expect for a bike computer. The one thing I was not expecting though is that the Strava route that I had loaded up wasn't giving me turn by turn directions. And it turns out, because I forgot about this, it's been a while, uh, that Stages does not automatically generate turn by turn instructions for any platform. So unlike you know Wahoo, Garmin, Hammerhead that create those turn by turn instructions, in the case of Stages, it just showed me that, that line on the ground to follow, which was fine, but not really what I was looking for. So I went back to Stages and I said, don't worry, that's on the way in the next one to two months. Uh, and they'll automatically then generate those turn by turn instructions. Uh, so you get notified as you approach a turn that, hey, you should be turning and where you should be going and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Cause again, that's not there today. And for a unit in 2022, that like, that should be absolutely positively baseline. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll be available for the different platforms because they'll just automatically generate it for you. And then since we're on missing sort of things, there's a couple other things that are missing, at least in my mind, compared to their competitors. Uh, number one is that uh, there is no DI2 or ETAP sensor support today. Uh, they said that's coming about two months from now. And then number two is that there is no climbing related features. No like Climb Pro or Climber or something like that. They said that's coming in about three months from now. So uh, hopefully looking forward to seeing that. Uh, and then also, I guess a very minor thing, but by the time you watch this video is probably already gonna be there, which is that Wi-Fi uploading of your finished activity doesn't happen automatically. That's coming next week. So again, by the time you actually receive this unit, it'll probably be there in a software update automatically. Next, I wanna get out and get some longer rides in, some rides with more elevation and some rides in the trees, some mountain biking rides in particular. Uh, the GPS track was largely very good when I was on the road. 
but I went through some forested sections. It was a little bit wobbly, not like bad by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, just like not as perfect as some of their competitors. Uh, and so I want to go ahead and validate that looks good uh, in the mountains and stuff like that. So hang tight for that coming up in a full enough review and sometime down the road here, maybe once these features get dropped on those units as well. Now, just a very quick look at size comparisons for this, uh, starting with the M200, and then we have the Wahoo Bolt V2, and then we have the Garmin Edge 830. The 530 and the 830 are identically sized, so that's all the same. Uh, and then on this side here, we have the older uh, M50. So you can just see that right there. A uh, quick look at those. They're all about the exact same height. Uh, maybe the M50 is a smidge higher, but they're virtually flat across the board there. So they're very similar in sizes. So there's that. And then we have here the L200. Sorry, it's still sideways. Uh, the L50. We have the Wahoo Roam, and you can see right here from a size, a screen size standpoint, uh, the Edge 830 screen is obviously smaller than the rest of them. You'd have to pop up to the 1030 or 1030 plus uh, to get the larger screen size from the Garmin side of things. Pricing on this has increased slightly on both of them by 30 bucks. So it went from 249 to 279 for the M200, uh, and then it went from 299 to 329 for the L200. Anyways, there you go. A quick look at things. Hopefully you found it interesting or useful. Again, if so, consider whacking that subscribe button. There is plenty more sports technology stuff. There's stuff like lined up up. It feels like every single day for the next, the next while. It's going to be a very, very busy April. With that, have a good one.